we still be able to cultivate the land if it rains less, if our rivers are too polluted? In Europe, the water cycle is declining. Agriculture is one of the first victims, but it's also a pressure source. That is signs of phosphorus in the water. We met farmers committed to managing water more sustainably, more efficiently. We take you to Ireland, but our first stop is Portugal. Farming has boomed in the arid southern region of Alentejo thanks to the Arqueva water reservoir, one of the largest artificial lakes in Europe. But will it be enough? Portugal anticipates a drop of 6% in water availability in the year 2040 and a rise of 26% of the demands. The Spurão estate, producing organic wine and olive oil, has launched itself in a quest to find the most resilient grapes. This vine plot is a laboratory. There is one variety per vine row, each divided into three irrigation levels, comfort, stress and drought. In this area, the vine crops have not received any water at all, and as you can see, some are doing very well. This is a good example. We can see the strength of the vigor. What's curious is that we point to the traditional trees of the region, and that they seem to be the ones that resist to the phenomena that we have today. These varieties are put into production on a covered soil to maintain cool and moisture. Irrigation is minimal to make the roots plunge and favor the fruit's quality over quantity. Underground probes allow to monitor soil moisture in each plot and keep the plants in slight water stress. We have here a line of stress. Stress, water, stress, water. So the technology is fundamental for the decision. We are trying to close everything, to connect the sondas to the caudalimetres, com uma série de algoritmos que uh, definem a necessidade de cada uma das parcelas e tentar fazer tudo de forma automática. The estate has its own wastewater treatment plant. Reclaimed industrial effluents flood this reservoir, which serves as a refuge for the wild fauna. Esta biodiversidade irá reequilibrar o ecossistema, vai permitir produzir com menos intervenção, de uma forma mais natural e é isso que nós procuramos. The aim of the European Union is to improve water efficiency by 10% by 2030. Portugal's plan includes building new dams, modernize water pipes and recycle more water. In other regions of Europe, water is not lacking, but its quality is a source of concern. We went to islands where levels of organic pollutants such as nitrates are in debate. This was a hot topic during the country's main farming event. Here in Ireland, agriculture covers about 70% of the national landscape. It is a backbone of rural communities and a very important sector for the economy. But the intensification of agriculture has created pressures on rivers, lakes and groundwater. So the government, together with the farmers, are searching for solutions. Farming for Water is a collaborative project that promotes good farming practices to protect water quality. We're working with the farmers. These are ASM advisors, they meet the farmer, they go down and they look at where are the riskiest parts on the farm, where is nutrients getting into the water and how can we block or address that. Nature-based interception measures include these wetland ponds where plants act as filters capable of capturing sediment and nutrient losses. Or riparian buffer zones between rivers and cultivated fields, such as this one where this dairy farmer is growing the grass that feeds his cows. It actually supplies the open pound with drinking water. So. The project aims at providing advice to 15,000 farmers like Neil Byrne, whose land is in a priority area. It's high risk area for phosphorus loss, and we identify these pathways. We stop spreading phosphorus and slurry here earlier in the year, we won't come back here until the 15th of March. I can see the effects on this farm straight away, the improvements which are made so fast. I have to say, to get financial support to, to do these works, it makes a huge difference for us. Farmers, we work beside the water, but we also use the water the same as everyone else. So many other people are dependent on it, so we're happy to do our part too. The European Directive on Nitrates requires member states to designate vulnerable areas and to limit the spread of inputs. Joan shows us the effects that fertilizers or pesticides can have on waterways. What are we looking for? Signs of eutrophication, 
in free draining soil, we have nitrate as a significant issue. Rain would wash it down into the groundwater and it comes into the rivers through base flow. In heavier soils, we see more phosphorus issues. So we can see here that the rocks are covered with filamentous algae, and that is signs of phosphorus in the water. These algae can result in dissolved oxygen to decline in the water. If some species like this crayfish look okay, others are already gone. Once you throw the balance, you start losing incrementally the next one, the next one, the next one, until you have dominated by tolerant species. 54% of Irish watercourses are considered in a good or high ecological status. The EU, through the Water Framework Directive, requires states to reach 100%. Here's our blue dot sign showing that it's high status here at the river. Healthy river. Very healthy. Here is a great indicator of water quality. Macroinvertebrates. Wow. That's a pearl. They would not survive to organic pollution. In Ireland, the most significant pressure is agriculture, but we have other pressures like the physical shape of our rivers. We also have a wastewater treatment plants. Sometimes we will have forestry pressures. It needs management, it needs farmers, it needs communities to come together to help protect the waters. So there's a bit of work to do. There is a good bit of work a good to do. Bit. In Ireland's efforts to renature water systems also go through degraded peatlands. Welcome to an Irish bog. When you help them get back into a healthier place, they're so, they're just bursting with life. A major challenge of the EU nature restoration law is to re-wet these landscapes that were often drained for agriculture or energy production. You already uh, planted so many plants. No, my garden is very neglected, <laughs> but um, I'm enjoying it today. In order for the soil to regain its ecosystem benefits, these volunteers responded to a call from the European project Palus Demos, which aimed to demonstrate the profitability of peatland palagiculture. If you ask a farmer to rewet the land, it then becomes almost useless for him in terms of having any income. What we're trying to do there is to showcase that you can crop sphagnum and use it as a replacement for coir in horticultural compost. This is the moss. This is the famous sphagnum moss. So in a flood event, uh, this will be able to hold 20 times its own weight. Come on, let's plant some moss. Let's go. Polluted culture, the productive use of wet soils. It's aimed to be kind of a win-win scenario. That's it. Time to part ways with our hands in the peat. We'll meet again in the moss. My first. Only one million more. Yeah. All right. <laughs>